What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Links and Locks Best Bets podcast. I'm Jason Sobel from the Action Network. He is Tony Sartori filling in for Benny Everill this week. If you get a chance, check out some of Ben's work. He went to Vegas for opening night of the the, the Super Bowl week, and he, he asked a whole bunch of fans who they like for the WM Phoenix Open. The fans have absolutely no idea who Ben is, what he's talking about, why he has an Australian accent. It was actually very funny on social media. What people don't realize is that uh, Benny actually just walks around asking people for their golf bets anyway. This was not even a bit. It was just like, that's just what he does. Uh, we're going to talk about our presenting sponsor, Bet365, in just a second. But Ben and I would also like to thank Breakers Casino in Salinas, California, for being uh, such nice hosts. Uh, we'll see if they can sponsor something for us pretty soon. I have a feeling that might not happen, but uh, they were very nice. They took all our money and took good care of us. Uh, for the week when we were at Pebble Beach uh, last week and got out before the weather. But first, as a reminder, the Links and Locks podcast is proudly presented by Bet365. Bet365 doesn't do ordinary. That's why you get more boosts with them than with anyone else. Every day, they power up the odds on hundreds of bets to give you a chance to win more. Bet365 boosts specific markets, your winnings and even parlays, and they don't stop there. Keep an eye out for their biggest and best Odds with the incredible super boost. Check out the boost and see why it's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 21 or older and present in Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Louisiana, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, or 18 and older in Kentucky. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Terms, conditions, restrictions apply as always. Tony, appreciate you setting in this week. Uh, We've got the WM Phoenix Open coming up. A nice field, not as nice as it was uh, when the week opened on Monday as Xander Shoffley and Victor Hovland, two of the three favorites, have withdrawn from this one. But we've still got two-time defending champion Scotty Scheffler and a, a very hot, or at least warm, Justin Thomas heating up right behind him. So uh, before we get into our 18 bets playing 18 holes, why don't you just give me a little overview of what you're looking for this week? I mean, got it. I mean... TBC Scottsdale, first of all, love this tournament. This is my favorite non-major of the year. Greatest show on grass for a reason. The crowd is awesome, especially on the par three stadium, on the stadium course. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward desert course, you know, just hit greens, make your putts. Like, I mean, that's kind of like a no shit statement, you know, like hit greens, make your putts, but that's what you got to do here. It's a pretty straightforward course. It's not too difficult to score. I mean, what Scotty finish here last year, 20 under, 19 under, like something around there. But, you know, hit your approach shots, hit the greens, and you'll be you'll be in contention on Sunday. Yeah, so I've got a little FOMO this week. I've probably covered the WM 15 in the last 20 years. Whether you're part of the party or just observing the party, it's always uh, a good time. I'm sure they're going to have plenty of good times out there this week. Uh, but because of the atmosphere, I'm looking beyond just the golf course. I am looking for guys this week who, quite honestly, have some balls. Uh, guys who have some confidence and want to show off in front of a ton of fans who aren't going to be bothered by, you know, a buzz of people talking, people drinking nearby, and, you know, not the kind of guys that have rabbit ears and are going to be worried. Uh, look, we've seen Brooks Kepka win here a couple times, Gary Woodland, guys who uh, they just look like they would fit in with the crowd if they weren't playing that week. Webb Simpson might have been an anomaly, but uh, that's about it over the last 10, 15 years, even Phil Mickelson going back, won this one three times. He certainly fits the profile. So I'm looking for guys who, not just ball strikers, but guys who are like, yeah, man, let's go. Love this place. Ricky Fowler, he's a great example. He won here five years ago, uh, not playing his best golf right now, but wouldn't surprise me if he is up there this week. He is not in my picks this week, but we will get to all of them playing 18 holes, making 18 bets at TPC Scottsdale. Tony. You are on the tee. You may now swing away. All right. Well, this may go against the whole uh, attitude of golfers we're looking for that we were just talking about. But uh, the first guy I'm going to go is Wyndham Clark. I know he's just coming off his win. It's kind of, it's, I don't I feel like it's almost a contrarian pick to go with him this week. Because I feel like a lot of people are going to go against him. You know, it's hard to win back-to-back weeks on tour. I feel like a lot of the thought process on him this week is going to be like, okay, on Saturday, what, he shoot a 60? Like, he had a he- heck of a round. And is he going to do that again? I think he is going to ride that momentum into this week. He finished top 10 here last year. I mean, he obviously went nuclear on Saturday. And then also, like, 
his January was not that great until until this past week, which is why he was 80 to 100 to one. And now this week he's back down to like 33 to one. But he was dealing with like the whole live rumors. And like now he's like debunked that he's saying he's staying. He's focused on legacies, focused on winning major championships on tour. And like I think his I think his focus is back aligned, which is why we saw such a great performance this past week and why we're going to see another one this week. And like, I mean, this is, he's a U.S. champion. He finished third at the Tour Championship last year. Like, he is among the world's best golfers. And I still think at 33 to one, it's too long, especially in a field where, yeah, you got Scotty, you have JT, who seems he's back. But besides those two, like, it's pretty open after those two. I really like Wyndham Clark this week. I think he completely fits the profile. I'd like him a lot more if he hadn't won last week. If he had just shown some yeah. form and finished in sixth place, I'd say, all right, he's kind of on the way up. The fact that he won, it was a shortened event, but he had to hang out for an extra day. It's almost like, you know, walking past the roulette table, seeing that 24 just hit and going, <laughs> hmm, I think I'm going to play 24. And, and so yeah, you're looking yeah. for that repeat number to come up. But again, I, I like everything about Wyndham Clark. Um, I, I'm probably personally, a, it's more of a top five, top 10 play, a DFS play for me. But I, I certainly like him this week. And uh, he's got exactly the same kind of, uh, attitude as a Brooks Kepka, as a Gary Woodland, a guy that like, hey, guys, watch this. There's you know a hundred thousand people on this hole. Cool, everyone, check this out. And he's not going to be thrown off by any of it. I uh, I always like to start off with a long shot play here, and I will start the second hole with a guy who I hope you got in Sunday night. Uh, some of the books out there had odds up for this one earlier than they usually do. Thomas Dietrich in some books was. 150 to one. He's about half that number now. I still think that's a decent price. The guy's playing some good golf. Had a top five finish in the weather shortened AT&T Pebble Beach Pro Am last week. I'm a little bit worried about Dietrich's ceiling. He's got nine career top three finishes on the DP World Tour, one more on the PGA Tour, fourth place, as I said last week. So he's a guy that comes close a lot, doesn't necessarily get it done, but at 75 to one, I'll take the chance that we see a ceiling week third all tony where are you going all right well we're going with jt poston and i don't know or poston i don't know if he he has sneakily become like one of the highest floors on tour it's he's made 13 straight cuts he has seven top seven finishes over that stretch and so like i so him and clark are my two outrights i'm targeting this week he's also 33 to one right now that number is kind of fluctuated um he's he's a couple different prices across the table but um, he's been a strokes gain machine on the approach. He's putting well. And like I said earlier, I was talking about how TPC Scottsdale is pretty straightforward. Hit greens, make your putts. And that's all Poston has been doing for the past few weeks here. He hasn't won on tour, or he hasn't won recently, which is why he's 33 to 1. But like he with seven top seven finishes over his past 13 tournaments, like he's knocking on that door. He keeps knocking. Like eventually that door is going to come down. And again, with this field, if you get past those top two guys, it's pretty open. So at 33 to one, depending, I give him a 30 to one, depending where you're looking. He, uh, I, I think he's worth a shot here this week. JT Poston for me is a guy, I put Adam Shank in this category as well. Guys that I'm not going back much further in their history than a year or two ago, just because I think they've improved so much uh, mm -hmm. in that relatively short time. So yeah, Poston's playing some really good golf right now. I like that. Fourth all, I'm going to go with my top five play this week. Had uh, Willie Wilcox, former PGA Tour player and current caddy for Sunjay M on my PGA Tour radio show last week, hanging out at the uh, right off the 18th green at Pebble. Not a bad spot to do a radio show from. And uh, he came over for 10 minutes. We were talking on air about just how good Sunjay is and how, how good he can become. And I still don't think people quite realize the combination of T to green Really good around the greens. Maybe a little bit of a streaky putter, but certainly not a bad putter at all. Uh, when Sanjay puts it all together, he's got the makings of a major champion at some point. Still think he might need one more uh, win or two more wins kind of out there just to kind of like build up that resume, build up that confidence just a little bit. I'll play him for a top five this week. Wouldn't surprise me if he goes out and wins this golf tournament. Hasn't played his best golf over the last two weeks, but before that, he had eight straight finishes of 15th or better. He's a guy that uh, is very, very consistent. You, you were just talking about a high floor in terms of post. And Sun J.M., until these last two weeks, had an extremely high floor. Uh, I'm not worried about him playing a third week in a row. The guy's a machine. 
plus 650 for a top five. Absolutely. I've been waiting. Like, it feels like every year it's going to be the Sunjay M year, right? Where he breaks out and I, I, yeah. it's coming. I feel like it's coming. But if we're going to stick with the top five market, I'm also going to take a guy that's 10 to 1 and for the top five, and that's Adam Hadwin. And earlier we were talking about, like, guys who are knocking on the door but, like, not kicking it down. That is Hadwin. So this season already you see he finished six at the AMAC, at the Am- uh, American Express. And then last year, he had three runner-ups last year, whether it was at the Shriners, the Rocket, and the Zurich. I think he will succeed here. I don't, I, I don't know if he's going to win because he's shown that like he's a guy who gets there but you can't quite get there. But like I think he can at least finish top five. Um, he's made each of his past eight cuts at TFC Scottsdale. He finished top ten last year. Um, I, I just think he's worth a shot at top five, especially at ten to one. That number just feels too long. Desert Rat Adam Hadwin. I asked him about that not too long ago. Uh, the fact that he plays his best golf in desert conditions. He's from Canada. He went to school in Louisville. So, of course, he plays his best golf in the <laughs> desert. I asked him why. He's like, I, I don't know. I spent <laughs> spent some time in Arizona, like, when I first graduated college and went out there. Maybe it kind of rubbed off on me. But he doesn't have a great answer for it. But he does know that he plays well there. All right. Sixth hole. Uh, look, I'm going to keep riding her until she bucks me. And I've been riding Bo Hostler for the entire year so far. He's a guy that's on my radar. I had him in my my column on the leap guys to kind of make the the jump to the next echelon that I do every single year Bo Hostler is firmly on that list and he is uh he's a guy that I've not been disappointed in so far he's playing some very good golf uh he's got some some Wyndham Clark qualities uh maybe not the same type of confidence maybe not the same type of ball striking but a guy who uh two best clubs in the bag are driver and putter And, and a lot of times we look at the guys who well, he's a really good iron player. The rest of it will kind of come from the inside out in the bag. The rest of it will come together. I don't mind guys who are really good off the tee, really good on the greens. All you need is a little bit of a spike week with those uh, with those irons and wedges, and, and you can climb the leaderboard. He's been doing that recently. I'll go Bo Hostler, top 10 at plus 475, which I think is a pretty good number there, Tony. All right, well, so then if you're going to go there, I'm going to follow that up. I also have Bo Hostler top 20 plus 230. So I'm right with you. Same yep. reasons. He finished top 14 here last year. Um, I'm with you, and I think Hostler is, is going to be a huge improvement year for him. I think, we're gonna, I think he's going to be a guy that's going to contend in a lot of tournaments. We've seen it already. I mean, he's finished top 15 or better in five of his past six. Like, high floor. Again, we were just talking about it. So same reasons as you. I have him top 20 plus 230. I also like him top 10, though. Yeah, makes a ton of sense, uh, and I believe he is he is not staying with my buddy Sleaze, Drew Stoltz, this year. He's done that before. Uh, the dog wakes him up in the morning, and so he doesn't get enough sleep. It's yeah, we figured that that problem out. So Bo should have <laughs> yeah. uh, plenty of sleep this week. All right, getting to the eighth hole. Here's here's one that again, this is more of a long term play, but a guy who's played well in Phoenix, and I'm just I'm bullish on Billy Horschel getting back into getting into the majors, getting into the signature events. He had a down year in 2023. This is a guy who sponsored an APGA event recently. He was doing some broadcasting for the event at Torrey Pines. Uh, Billy's a guy that is, even if the even if the game doesn't come around, the karma is going to come around for Billy. He's doing some good things within the game of golf right now. Uh, I, I do like him a lot this week. And again, I, I like him a lot long term. So this is, as much a short-term play as a long-term play, but top 20 on Billy Ho this week at plus 320. Nice, nice. I like it. Um, I'm going to stick also in the finishing market. I'm going top 10, Carl Yuan. This is 20 to 1, so a pretty big number here. It, it's just a guy who's in good form, and at 20 to 1, keep riding it. Like He's got three top six finishes over his past eight tournaments. Um, Carl Yuan, it's kind of funny because he's got that like crazy swing, but like it's actually a pretty good swing. It's, it gets crazy. It's after the contact. So like I, I'm not I like I like him as a golfer and the results are starting to come. His main concern has typically been his accuracy off the tee. But at Desert Course, like like TBC Scott, so you can be inaccurate off the tee and be fine. Like it's it's very easy to get yourself back into a good spot after a drive that's slightly like, left or right. Um, and so that's why I like if you take out the driver or at least the actually of Yuan's driver, like out the bag, like he, he, he's pretty, he's a pretty damn solid golfer. So at 20 to one at top 10, just keep riding the momentum. I think it's worth a shot for sure. Yeah. That's big dub. All right. The front nine is down. We've got a back nine left to play, but one more reminder, the links and locks podcast is presented by bet three, six, five, bet three, six, five does not do 
Ordinary. That's why you get more boost with them than with anyone else. Every day, they power up the odds on hundreds of bets to give you a chance to win more. Bet365 boosts specific markets, your winnings, and even parlays, and they don't stop there. Keep an eye out for their biggest and best odds with the incredible Super Boost. Check out Boost and see why. It's never ordinary at Bet365. Must be 21 or older and present in Arizona, Colorado, Iowa, Louisiana, New Jersey, Ohio, Virginia, or 18 and older in Kentucky. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Terms, conditions, and restrictions apply. All right, let's get to the back nine. Man, it's nice not having Benny here. We don't have to talk about all the Australians that he picks every single (laughs) week. I don't think we've picked an Aussie yet. Uh, As we get to the back nine, I'm going to keep that trend going. I always like to Start out the back nine with my first round leader play. I'm going a little bit further down the board. I I like taking a chance on these bets. And I know it might sound weird to go after a guy that shot 75 in the opening round last year, but Kurt Kitayama backed that up with three solid rounds. He's playing some good golf right now. He's got a lot of offensive firepower, and that's what I'm looking for. When When I'm making first round leader plays in general, I'm not looking at the top of the board. I know Benny does that a lot, and he's offset some uh, guys that he hasn't played in the outright marketplace by taking them for first-round leader plays. I'd rather just take a chance on these guys, but I'm not looking for guys who are conservative players. I'm looking for aggressive players with some firepower. Kurt Kitayama fits the bill. He's playing some good golf right now. Get him at 75-1 to for a first-round leader play. Again, we are recording before the tee times are out. I would certainly favor... The guys who play Thursday morning over those Thursday afternoon, but I don't think it's going to make a, a ton of difference this week, Tony. Yeah, so that was actually that's going to be a perfect transition because I am going to take an Aussie in the first round leader market. I am going to uh-huh. go after Adam Scott. So he stayed pretty busy in the winter. He had he went over to Europe and he played three events and he finished top seven in all three. Obviously, level of competition is not quite the same, but that's still an impressive showing. But if you go back to tour exclusively, he's got three straight top twenty finishes. Like he's been playing better. And so we have Bermuda grass greens this week and he's gone top five or he's finished top five and he's finished fifth, excuse me. He's finished fifth and he's finished seventh in his past two appearances on tournaments that are contested on Bermuda grass greens. He gained strokes putting in both those tournaments. So again, and the tee times aren't out yet, but 55 to one, I, even if he's in the afternoon, I feel pretty good about him at least being putting together a solid first round. If he's able to handle those greens well, which I think he will be able to. All right, Tony, you and I don't know each other that well yet, but I feel confident that I can say this to you. I can't hate that pick anymore. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) First of of all, Adam Scott is a guy who I'm actually shocked that he's still playing as much golf as he is. I give him credit for that because he could be uh, at home just, you know, enjoying uh, the beach, uh, going out surfing every day, hanging out with the fam. And uh, instead, he's out here grinding, not just at the majors and signature events, but playing a place like this where he's only played once before. There's a reason why Adam Scott never came to Phoenix until two years ago, even though he's been on tour for more than 20 years, it's because it's not his scene. And so uh, I just think Adam Scott's going to show up this week. He's going to look around, see all these, you know, 18 year old kids uh, hammering beers in the stands. He's going, Nope. I just, nah, it's just, it's not my thing. I, I just, Look, I could be wrong. He might just may- – maybe everyone else gets too into the party, and I'm just like, oh, I can just focus and play golf, but I don't see it. I, I, I see Adam just uh, not really enjoying himself this week and maybe needing to get out of town a little quicker. All right, uh, we'll get to the 12th hole. In honor of podcast producer and audio director Matt Mitchell, I, I need a Mitchell on the card this week, and uh, I have taken Keith Mitchell perhaps more over the last few years than I've taken anybody else. I went and watched him play the second nine at Spyglass last Thursday. Uh, there are a lot of people out there. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it had to do with his uh, partners. who's was playing with Tom Brady and, and Josh Allen. I, I guess people like those guys. I'm sitting there watching Keith Mitchell because I've had so much of an investment on him over the last few years. Swing was a little loose, but I still, I watch Keith in person. I watch the way he handles himself. I watch uh, his swing. I, I watch his hands around the greens. I'm still like, this guy should be, and I think will be a top 25 type player in the world at some point in the not too distant future. I'm going to play him for a top 30 this week. Again, he fits the profile. He's a guy that let's puff out our chest, put our shoulders out and let's go uh, show these guys what we can do. I think it's a 
a good atmosphere for Keith Mitchell. And quite honestly, I like all the Mitchells. I like the whole Mitchell family this week. All right. Well, if you didn't like Scott as much, I got I got a guy who I think you do like, and that is Kevin Yu. Okay. So he's top 40, yeah. top 40 plus 105. I mean, everyone that follows shot link data or looks at the strokes gain stats knows we've been waiting for the Kevin Yu breakout forever, right? The, the, what's the one thing he can't do? He can't putt. He turns into Ray Charles on the greens, right? But so in two of his past three tournaments, he's gained strokes putting. And where did he finish in those? Sixth and third. Like, that's all he has to do. If he can just make his putts, he will be fine. Now, of course, as I say that, at Pebble last week, his putter imploded again. But he's dealing with Poa Noah Greens over there. We're like, that, that's way, that's such a more difficult surface to play on than the Bermuda grass greens he'll be on this week. So if he's just able to hit those putts, I feel like top four, he's very safe for him. I think that's a very safe number, especially at plus money. Uh, lives in Scottsdale, went to Arizona State, and I'm, I'm looking it up. I don't believe that he has ever played this golf tournament before. I, so this has not. got... A little bit of a yeah, this has got a little bit of a fifth major feel for Kevin Yu. He's a guy that I I think top forty is a smash play. Mm-hmm. I think that's conservative. Mm-hmm. I really like him. I don't have him on my list here for the pod, but I mentioned him in my column this week. Uh, I think Kevin Yu is a really nice play, and I think he's a guy that moving forward, remember the name. This guy is an elite level ball striker on those spike weeks on the greens, like we've seen uh, as Tony mentioned twice already this year, a third and a sixth. Uh, He is going to post some big time results. All right. I've got a guy from my top 40 this week who's playing some great golf. You look at the numbers and boy, Nick Hardy, every single week off the tee, approach shot game through the roof. Putter's been okay. The results are just kind of, eh, he's been 47th, 37th, 42nd, 47th, right around that top 40 number. But you look at the data, you look at the analytics and it should be a little bit better for Nick Hardy. So I'll take a, a very small chance that it moves up a notch or two just based on the ball striking numbers. Top 40 at plus 170. I love getting some decent plus money for a top 40 play. Uh, I think Nick Hardy's a guy that I can trust a little bit. He makes sense for a, a low cost and potentially low owned play in DFS as well. So I think uh, Nick Hardy's a guy that, um, that should have a little return on investment this week. Uh, so I'm going to, I agree with you. I'm going to uh, go back to the first round leader market one more time. And I'm going to look at Ben on. And the reason I like him more in the first round market than I do is fully is like, we've, I trust him way more on a Thursday than I do on a Sunday. Like we have yet to see him win on tour, but outside of winning, he's, he's competing, you know, he's nine straight made cuts, four finishes inside the top four over that span. And he's fared well here. So he's five for five on made cuts at TPC Scottsdale, two top 10 finishes over that stretch. And obviously, tea time, again, tea times are not out, and I hope he's in the morning versus the afternoon. Um, but at 40 to 1, either way, I'm taking a shot on it, regardless of when he tees off. As we often say here on the podcast, not very subtly, I will tell you about Ben on in just a few minutes. <laughs> uh, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. All right. Uh, 16th all. Uh, really, I like everything about Justin Thomas this week, except the number. If you got in before Shoffley and Hovland withdrew on Monday, congratulations. You got a little bit better of a number, but um, I will still probably have a little investment in JT in the outright marketplace. I will have an investment in him almost everywhere else. Uh, One and done's. I think he makes a really, really smart play this week. DFS, I'm starting out lineups with Justin Thomas. He's played this event nine times. In seven of those occasions, he's been 17th or better. Uh, The only thing he hasn't done is win, but he's been top six in his last five starts around the world. So he's a guy that is heating up. I know there's a lot of criticism. Last year, he missed the playoffs. He was given a spot on the Ryder Cup team. Didn't play his best golf. Wasn't terrible there, but uh, still JT is is getting very, very close to being classic JT once again. I know that it's tough to fade the number one ranked player in the world. I know it's tough to fade a guy who's won this event two times in a row, but I can get a nice number on JT plus 165 in a matchup over Scotty Scheffler. All things considered, if nobody had odds and I was just picking a winner this week, it would be Justin Thomas. Well, if that's the case, then I think he's probably going to beat Scotty Scheffler. I'm going to take him in that plus money matchup. And I actually really like that one. JT, uh, again, JT could be the card wrecker this week. If you're looking for those long shots, looking for a, 
a six straight long shot to uh, come to pass this week in Phoenix. Just watch out. You, you might need to avoid JT this week. Yeah. Tony. Um, God, JT, he's right there. I, he just got, he's right there. I think this could be the year where we see him win a major again. And I'm, I'm excited to see what the rest of the year has in store for JT, especially following last year, like just couldn't get it going until the end, but by then it was too late. But, um, so for my final play, I'm going to go to the top 30 market and I'm going to get roasted for this. I'm going to butcher his name, even though I hear it on the broadcast every week, but Christian Bezweden, who, however, however you say it, I always, I always butcher Ooh. the hell out of it. Zaydenu. Zaydenu. Thank you. I, now I need you to spell it. I got it in front of me. I got it in front of me, so I'd be cheating. But, oh, come on, but that's cheating. yeah. That's a. But this is another guy who's in tremendous form, All right? So we see him to go top thirty, which is plus one seventy. That's a. There's a lot of room for error there. He still finished top thirty. He's got three top twenty finishes over his past five tour events. Um, I talked about Scott went over to Europe in the winter. So did so did he. He um has three top seventeen finishes over there. Um, he finished top 23 or finished high for 23, excuse me, at last year's Byron Nelson, which is played at TPC Craig Ranch, which is another Tom White Weisskopf design. So, I mean, that's just a lot of top 30 trends. I think it just, again, it's kind of like how I played you for top 40. Just it feels like a safe number at plus 170. There's a lot of room for error and you can still finish top 30 here. Yeah, Zayden is a guy that for a long time, I only trusted in tougher conditions, almost like a, uh, poor man's Matt Fitzpatrick, and yet he's shown recently that uh, even when the score gets low, um, he he can go low and he can he can hang with those guys as he did in the desert a few weeks ago. So that makes a lot of sense. All right, 18th hole, I will go with my favorite outright plays. I often do another one that I hope you got in early because this guy was at 50 to one just about 48 hours before we're recording this podcast. He's now at 30 to one, but I still think that Byunhun on Benny on. Guy that's been waiting a long time for his first career PGA Tour victory. I think it can happen this week. Uh, there are a lot of trends pointing towards him. Started out red hot at both the Century and the Sony Open this year. He's played well in Phoenix in the past. He's a guy that's got some value in the outright marketplace, even though he hasn't won before. Uh, and a guy that would be a very popular play. Benny on at 30 to 1. My favorite outright play this week, but again. Be careful. You've got to avoid a JT this week, and I really do like JT as well. All right. Uh, this has been the Links and Locks Best Bets podcast. Uh, you remember you can find us every week wherever you find your favorite podcast. Download, subscribe, rate, and listen during the entire PGA Tour season. For Tony Sartori, we thank him for filling in for Ben Everell. I'm Jason Sobel. Good luck with all your bets for this week's WM Phoenix Open. Here's hoping you hit the green.